This is natural. <laughs> this is a natural flow. We're modern mixes. We don't follow much structure. We follow systems. Ooh, I like that. Um, yeah, because my teacher said once to me something that it was super deep by that time. And it was structures collapse, systems adapt. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well said. Yeah. Depends on the system, though. Depend <laughs> on the system? <laughs> There's some systems that collapse? No, that are not better than the structure. Depends. Okay. Have you ever lived in Germany? <laughs> 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 no. Like no. praising your praise in Germany because... No, not really. The other way. Uh, but they have the structured way of living, no? Yeah, they do. But also the, the system. Mm. Oh, like their system. The system. <laughs> <laughs> The so matrix. I remember once I had this attempt to start the Modern Mystics podcast, and I remember interviewing a few people, but never I never kept going. I am part of this uh, percentage of I don't know what it is, eighty percent that the podcast that start doesn't pass this third or fourth episode. <laughs> <laughs> Most of podcasts that start doesn't doesn't really um, pass the third or fourth episode, and. So that's why when I see a podcast that have episode number 154, <laughs> for me it's like, wow, <laughs> you guys are doing great. So let's see. Let's see if this is another, this is a good excuse to continue this. But I am so glad because we just finished a powerful journey together um, mm. as, uh, as teachers, as students, as friends in a um, tantric yoga facilitator program of almost a month. And I just want to say... Well done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, thank I mean, you. we navigated some shadows, some emotions, some sickness, um, highs and lows. And why not to create a moment to sit down, hang out, share a little bit about our journeys, a little bit about the, the, prog the journey in the program that I know brings a lot to so many people. And as a good excuse to hang out as friends. So I'm glad you guys are here. <laughs> I just want to ask you first, so people can have an idea who you are, who we are, and a little bit about your journey and how you end up practicing yoga, living under the framework of yoga or tantric yoga. But I'm very curious about what was the turning point. What was the moment, especially, that you say, I really want to explore this in depth. I'm curious about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my case, um, let's go back a few years ago. Um, Just a few. Yeah, <laughs> a few, maybe more than 15 years ago when I started my journey into health and wellness. I was working as a lawyer. I had a huge burnout oh in Brazil. God. And I didn't know what to do with my life. I just wanted to heal myself. And making a very long story, very short, I went into this journey to Asia to do a Vipassana in Nepal. And after that, I was so close to India. And I decided, well, why not go to India and continue my search there, you know? Because I, I was so fascinated by Indian music, the legends about Ganesh and all mm -hmm. of that. So I went to India and I ended up uh, doing Ashtanga yoga in Goa. And I was so impressed. I was always a very uh, sportive person. I love to do sports. And I was looking at that practice and finding extremely hard and also very impressive and challenge. So I said, I want to be really good on that. And I decided to do a teacher training to learn more about that. I end up in Mysore, in the land of Ashtanga Yoga. But not uh, learning about Ashtanga, actually, I studied, I did a teacher training on Hatha Yoga. And it was amazing, I'm so grateful. But actually, my journey into yoga came from a deep desire of healing my body from that burnout that I went through. Mm -hmm. And it brought me so much more, actually, you know? And in that time, what I've learned most 
that was really incredible, I'm so grateful, uh, discipline. I was very undisciplined <laughs> person. <laughs> and in that time, we were waking up at 4.30 in the morning and all mm. chanting mantras, pranayamas, and all of that. And it was an incredible journey of self-control, discipline, healing. Yeah, I'm so grateful. You were, where was your job before? I was a lawyer in Brazil. You study, you study law. Yeah. I that's impressive. Yeah, I studied <laughs> law. You guys knew? No. <laughs> That's wild. I was a lawyer. You didn't know that? I, I, I think I knew, but I forgot. You forgot. <laughs> because I see you, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, I Tantric know. embodiment, <laughs> feminine embodiment, yoga yeah. teacher. Tea ceremony. Yeah. Wow. That is like the opposite. It was of a like long time ago. With a suit, like defending a case. <laughs> I don't like that. What? But uh, I've been there. Wow. In the tribunals, oh, wow. in my tire, high mm. heels. And stress. It's stress, mm. my masculine energy, full power, fighting for justin, justice, wow. you know? And it was a huge journey to be here and reconnecting to my feminine soul, mm. you know? Mm. Really now integrating these beautiful polarities, masculine and feminine, and that comes the tantric path in my mm. life, which is really integrating this and it's not easy, it's really challenging, mm. you know, in nowadays world where we need to be so productive and fast paced, you know. It's it's hard sometimes for us women, I feel. We really need to slow down and take time to do our yoga practice, you know, our rituals of self care, self love. And this helps me to, to ground myself and and balance better those uh, polarities. It's crazy to think that you, at some point, realize it, that how burnt out you were, and then you took the the choice to stop and leave. Like that takes courage, I think, and it might be out of desperation. You know, it's like I don't know what else to do because this is too much. But how many people stay? You know, stay in the job, stay in the burnout, stay in the stress. It. Uh, this is the people who get. I would assume really sick mm. and end up really lost in a really dark space. Such a blessing to somebody to sometimes like realize this is time. This is the time to stop. This is the time to take action and prioritize myself and my yeah. health. You know, before I didn't care about health. I used to drink, smoke one pack of cigarettes per day. Like a proper late <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> like I thinking about the next case. Yeah. <laughs> But I always did my sports, you know, I was swimming, mm. I, this was always um, my thing. But um, once you lose your health, it's no joke. When you start to don't trust on yourself an anymore to go out on the street and think that you're gonna faint anytime or have a panic attack anytime, you know, that it really make you face you and question what are you doing with your life and why you mm. are going through mm. this, you know. It, it, it for me it was a death in that time a, s a part of me was dying for this new healthy yogi mm. you know uh, to be born but it was not easy to let it go of that identity that I had of myself you know and one of the difficult parts for me from that journey was some of my friends they were looking at me and say oh I prefer Caroline before. Mm -hmm. The Caroline that That's we would go horrible. party <laughs> and drink mm -hmm. and get drunk, you know, and have fun. And, and for me, I was like, yeah, but I, I can't do this anymore, you know? That yeah. was making me sick, that path. Mm. So so now, yes, I, I drink green smoothies, you know, <laughs> and I do yoga in the morning. I wake up seven in the morning, ready for my practice. It's a different vibe. Mm. No more night times. And, and isn't it the best possible compliment someone can make telling you oh my god you changed and you you will be like hell yeah i did yeah, and i love yes it. and i love it so much yeah. <laughs> now i really see that especially mm. when i sorry i love you guys but <laughs> when i see my old friends and where they are and where i would be if i had kept exactly. that path i i i think i'm so happy that i took the path of mm health and wellness, you know? 
Mm. I feel very good. I wake up very happy, healthy, feeling very excited about my life in, in alignment with my purpose, with the things that I do, you know, with my job, with, uh, yeah, with my path. I'm, yeah, I'm so grateful. And they, they probably know that that was a positive change and a positive exactly. shift. They probably know and they still hold, many people hold resent, resentment again against you because of changing you know i prefer the old you you know and that that's i think shows like how much they didn't love you <laughs> actually if they really love yeah. you they will empower you and they will celebrate yeah. you um exploring your full potential as a human being yeah and also i think that our old friends when they they have those feelings it's also because make them face their own exactly. uh, devils, you yeah. know, their yeah. own darkness. Exactly. Like, come on, she's getting mm. out oh. of this crazy life. You know, you and should the do the ego same. Is screaming like, no, yeah. you stay here. But the souls of them are like, wow, look at her, she did it. We want to do it as well. But they just hold themselves back. Exactly. But you have influenced them more than you think. Yeah, like and all of the people that you were surrounded with, and they see you, and they see how much you've changed and true they hate it but deep down they love it and nowadays <laughs> i receive message from them caroline help me caroline mm. yeah now uh, even my family yeah. that in the beginning they were like mm, yeah. you became vegan you don't eat meat anymore you don't oh. share the same food with us what are you doing you are too radical nowadays they come and ask me questions about nutrition you know right and and yeah. it's nice after a while they they kind of accept and they see the benefits mm -hmm. and you become an example as well you know when you really embody the path and just one more thing i want to share about that <laughs> you mentioned about this shift and uh, how difficult it is and for me i'm very grateful for india india it was an initiation for me so mm -hmm. i went to nepal I was still a lawyer, I went just for a holiday. And I went to Nepal, did a Vipassana, I went to India, and I started to travel there. And I would ask the Indians, can I stay in that hotel over there? And they would say, stop push me like that. Uh. <laughs> and <laughs> everywhere I go, any question I ask, they always say, stop push me like that, stop push me like that. And I was like, what, <laughs> what does it mean, stop push me like that? And then I understood it means anything is possible. Mm. Mm. And I kept I traveling it. in there for <laughs> one month, two months, three months. And I see many people living in the flow, mm. living their mm. truth according to their hearts. And I start to believe that <laughs> anything is possible. Exactly. I embodied Sabkush <laughs> Melega in my life. Really. Tattoo in your chest. Really. Sabkush <laughs> Melega. <laughs> <laughs> then I remember entering in a cafe, cyber cafe. Do you remember that mm -hmm, time? Mm -hmm. There was no Wi-Fi, mm. mobile phones. <laughs> we go into a cafe, use the computer there for 30 minutes, one hour, writing this huge letter and crying on the mm. computer like, I'm so sorry, family, mm. but I won't be a lawyer anymore. I know you mm. guys wanted me to do this since I'm a child, but I'm going to try <laughs> my own path. <laughs> I'm going to follow my heart and my dreams. I should at least try at once you know, <coughs> to really live my truth. And that was the... That email was the psychomagic mm. act. Exactly. The letting go the ritual. Wow. Yes, yes. And I cried, I cried. It was a rite of passage for me. Right. Yeah, it was amazing. And after that, I said, oh my God, you must the have hell I'm so gonna free. do of my yeah. life. <laughs> I yeah. just quit my career, yeah. like, okay, I don't care anymore. And then I, I told myself, okay, I'm just gonna learn anything, everything I can. And I will study and learn until I find something that really touches me. Mm. And I did the teacher training, yoga teacher training, was one of the things I started to do. But I did for myself. That was not my intention to become a, a teacher, yoga teacher, from law to yoga mm. teacher, you know? <laughs> that was not in my plan. But, stop push my leg. Mm. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Me too, I love it. Parisia, I'm just curious about you in bringing the Indonesian power to the training power. and oh. this table. Um, something that I see that somebody ask me why in the yoga teacher training there's the, or the retreat you're organizing there's not many local people there are always 
one, so, sometimes we have one or two, but I say, I don't know, we have scholarships, we have discounts, we have a lot of like incent incentives to bring like, for me this is very important, one of the other teachers also is, is a Balinese. And I'm curious about why that doesn't happen, but you are here. And what was, wh what, how you end up in the path of yoga and self growth and spirituality? I know you work with this and you help others to do the same. Uh, I'm very curious about your journey. So, firstly, about Indonesian, I think we haven't really have that awareness of like spirituality, wellness, and mindfulness. And I think that's because of um, like our culture, our place is so religious. Mm. Um, and for me, I came from a big city in Jakarta, um, from a very religious family as well, um, it's from Catholic family. Um, so that conditioning was like really deep on me um, with a lot of rules and my turning point firstly was from a relationship with a man that's not healthy uh, and I realized that's because I didn't know myself, I didn't love myself. Mm. Um, so. It felt like at the time everything that I did, it it didn't fulfill me deeply. So it came from this curiosity of like, I felt like there is something more. Mm. So from there, it was COVID. And then um, I read one personal development book. It's called Atomic Habits. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> <it's> <laughs> we all know that one. <laughs> Yeah, so it's from really about positive habits. Um, I really followed everything that I read. Good job. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it changed my life. Wow. I started like really by one by one one by one from my small room, um, from meditation, guided meditation from YouTube. Um, I started like closing my eyes. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> with timer. Um, I did started yoga. I started working out. So everything to change my life, wow. and that also got me into spirit learning about spirituality. Because at that time I couldn't speak English disfluently, so I used English, and English brought me to this all of this knowledge. Wow. So I felt like. Yeah. It's so important to learn English as well, True. and not Indonesian can speak English. It's only in Bali, but mostly Indonesian still really need um, a lot of education mm -hmm. in English. And that's why I feel like I am privileged. Uh, I know this language because now I have all of this information. So yeah, um, and from there, um, I graduated. I graduated from university. And f and f I was still in Jakarta, still in my parents' house, and everyone around me they started applying for a corporate job, like following. And I went different. I went out from this from this circle and going to Bali. Um, yeah, and everyone was like, no, why? Why you came to <laughs> Bali? It's <laughs> no. It's stay here in the big city. What are you doing? Exactly. You're from a big city. You're just graduated. What are you doing? It's so not safe. What is Bali for them, like for your family? How, what What is the, the, mm. the qualities of Bali? Is it like the, the tourist place or is it like a hippie island? or a Because no. it's different culture, yeah. different religion. Yeah, it's very there's, different. There's this very different spot in Indonesia. Um, it's like something that's different and free and too free for them right. mm -hmm. because they have a lot of rules. <laughs> that's <See>. an influence. <laughs> yeah. so like, yes. You're too free, no. This is too free for Yeah, me. this is too <laughs> free. Like a lot of bullets, a lot of foreigners. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> now she became a yoga teacher. So yeah, but I didn't hear what they say, so I was 
coming to Bali alone. Wow. Um, yeah. You're so brave. Mm. Yes. Um, Two years ago. She's amazing. And I would say from the moment I stepped to Bali uh, to here, it's been two years, and I felt like every moment there, it's a part of my spiritual journey. Mm. Even though it's not yoga, it's not meditation, I did a lot of things from partying as well, um, of course from going to the <laughs> beach, from trying everything, going to Ubud, going to Uluwatu. Um, what I learned is that um, learning more about me or learning about spirituality, it's not only about yoga and meditation. So sometimes partying can also be a spiritual practice. Um, <laughs> Ask Manjit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, um, it really gave me um, a proof that everything is possible. Yes, everything is possible. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, but after two years, I just got into my first yoga teacher training um, because coming to Bali, I saw a lot of spirituality and I was like, hmm, which one should I choose? It's too much spirituality. A lot of people um, use spirituality for marketing, for wellness. So it's like, maybe, maybe let me step back and partying instead. <laughs> <laughs> And, and why did you choose modern mystics? Mm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a plan as well. So I just quit my job. Um, I became a marketing manager and that also brought me to Bali. I was a marketing manager at wellness retreats and then I quit my job because I felt like there's something more and I want to learn more. Um, so I just quit and then I didn't know what to do. Um, so I, I tried a lot that. of things from creating content, from getting certification in personal trainers. So I <laughs> tried uh, literally everything um, because I want to prove myself that everything is possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and my intention is like, I want to give an example to people that, um, I am a human being of infinite possibilities. Ooh. So mm. I can be this, I can be that, Beautiful. I can be that, whatever I choose. So exactly. I literally tried everything until uh, I, I saw Facebook and I saw Modern Mystics. <laughs> <laughs> and what's, in what's interesting for me, it's the word holistic yoga because I believe in holistic and seeing Beautiful. everything like whole. Amazing. So that's my purpose. Mm. I love that. Long story short. Because <laughs> you and, go. and you need to, she needs to tell also that she, she told me this on uh, the backstage that <laughs> after she did the oh teacher yeah, yeah, training, yeah. her life is unfolding in ways that she just got a job in the same day that we did the final celebration. Mm. She went into a job interview. She got the job. Tell me more. Tem tell us more about this part. <laughs> so yeah, after, <laughs> after the training, uh, the puzzle started like, ooh, it's more clear now. <laughs> <laughs> so from university, my background was HR. Um, at that time, I didn't know. Maybe I will not need this. I never use this. But now it started to make more sense mm. in a way that I thought I would became became a personal trainer or a yoga teacher. But now I see myself um, sharing mindfulness and wellness mm. to people who don't have access to it. So yeah, for example, for employees in a corporate world, mm. um, and yeah. And she got uh, an invitation to speak about that, you know, just mm. got the invitation so again. Yeah, being it's like just speaker <laughs> and also facilitator. A Love new that. life. Isn't this is literally amazing? what happened when I always say that so many portals start opening when we do these type of things and we exactly. take like steps of courage for ourselves. Mm. And it's beautiful how I hear from maybe Paulo Coelho, I don't know, but the universe <laughs> rewards courage. Yes. Mm. That's a power quote and i think also decision 
when mm. we decide something, the universe, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's support that. It's the courage of the decision. Exactly. Right? It's the courage of the decision. And yeah, it's some things are meant to happen to you, but also we are meant to move our ass and yeah. and show up for ourselves first. Exactly. I just wanna say something that I what I hear from you when you were sharing that you notice after you break up, and I wanna ask you something about it, but you notice that you wanted to change and you wanted to grow and transform and expand. And I love how you start using um, resources that everyone has. For example, you say you start looking for mm -hmm. YouTube videos. True. Mm -hmm. Everyone, anybody, anybody in the world with a connection or with like an old laptop or an old phone can check some YouTube videos of a uh, yoga class, a guided yoga class, that's for free. How much it cost uh, a book cost? Just a few dollars, right? Yeah. It's not an expensive thing. So sometimes people think they really need to, uh, you know, buy a first class ticket to I an ayahuasca retreat in Peru <laughs> or going to the shamans <laughs> in Brazil and these <laughs> masters somewhere in Antarctica that will tell you the secret of life. Um, and you knew what you had what you had accessed in that moment and you use the resources wisely because how many people read Atomic Habits or any book? It's like, okay, next book, okay, yeah. next book. But you put it into yes. practice diligently. Mm -hmm. You watch the YouTube videos, you wow. commit to your practice and you see the outcomes of this, you know, like amazing outcomes. You live, you, you, you live somewhere else. You're like getting all these invitations, all these opportunities. And I think it's a be beautiful and powerful call for people who think that they, oh, I don't have money or I don't have time or like you do, you know, you do. You can expand and you can transform. Quick question about relationship though, that you were mentioned that the turning point for you, it was a difficult relationship. And you said right after that it was, you didn't love yourself. Mm. Do you think when people don't really love themselves, attract this type of relationships uh, somehow, some way for them to, you know, step up in their power and listen to things. Does it happen to you? Uh, do you think that was happened to you? And h how, wha what would you say also for people who feel in the middle of a complicated, toxic slash abusive relationship? What would be your suggestion, your call? I think, yeah, I think we attract people who are in the same way, like in the same vibration. Um, so I will say it's really important to have a healthier relationship with myself first before having a healthier relationship with everyone else. It's not only a romantic partner, but also friends, um, family as well. So why I came to Bali, um, it's it's for letting go. It's really about letting go to all of these conditionings and that I've been that I had in Jakarta from my uh, environment, and now I I let go uh, from this. Uh, I have this new environment, and now I can attract uh, healthier things, happier things that's more aligned with me. So I will, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and she touched on a point very important, the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes we really need to get out of even our family, our houses, because the environment is not supportive for our growth. And relationships, uh, they really show us the medicine that we need, you mm -hmm. know? And sometimes when we get involved in a toxic relationship, if we really want to learn from that relationship, it teaches us self-love. Because when you love yourself, you don't allow yourself to be in mm -hmm. such a relationship. So it really brings the medicine that we need, some people. And sometimes the worst poison, it's your biggest, uh, it's your greatest gift in life, you know? That make you suffer so much that you have that breakthrough finally. And, and you use the, the bottom to really kick and go up, <laughs> like she did, you know? So amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. I, I love, love that. it. I love that. Melo. Ooh. You already did a yoga teacher training mm -hmm. and you were a yoga teacher a yoga teacher before joining this yoga teacher training program. Um, 
I'm very curious <laughs> from the very first instance. I know you have been in the path of self exploration, spirituality, expansion of consciousness, also supporting others in the path through different ways. What? <laughs> how everything is started? Yes. So how did it start? It started some years ago. Um, I think it was somewhere in 2017. Um, like this typical feeling of, wow, I feel like I would rather die than live one more day. Mm. Like my life felt like I didn't want to get out of the bed in the morning. And not many people knew about that, so I was suffering from a really bad depression. And I didn't really know what's going on because I seemed to have everything. Everything was fine. I had, um, I had been through several things already, like I have been in a really long relationship and we had a breakup, but we got back together and I was like fired from my job and then I found a new one which was even paying better and stuff like that and I felt like okay no that's that's pretty great and I just crawled back out of the black hole and then I found yoga in a really strange way because everyone was talking about how yoga is changing your life and I was like oh, I want to know how that feels like. So what I did... Like people listening this podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did, I went to my gym and I um, participated in one of the free mm. yoga classes and it was an Ashtanga class. And it was so weird. And th they wanted me to like put my body into poses. I, would, I was just not... It was not possible for me. And I watched them and I was like, wow, so this is yoga. I don't know. I, I <laughs> just feel pain and I feel awkward and it feels funny for me. So, okay, whatever, let's try again. And that was my first impression of like yoga, which was Ashtanga. And my friend, she kept telling me, oh, it really changed my life. And every time I do yoga, I feel so connected and blah, blah, blah. And I felt like I want to feel that as well. So I searched for um, a yoga teacher training in Germany. And before starting that, I went to Bali for the first time with my boyfriend for vacation. But it was a typical vacation. It was like maybe f 20 days or something. We were just like traveling from Ubud to Sanur, Nusalemunga, and all of the things that you're doing, Uluwatu, and I fell in love with Uluwatu then. And Ubud. <laughs> and not I got back in. <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. There was just like this honking and bike, bike, bike. And all that I have from Changu is a tinnitus. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back home to Germany. And what happened was burnout. Mm. I was not able to go to work anymore. And I felt like the world didn't make any sense to me. So I found the courage to quit my job after like staying at home for several weeks and then the company was like accusing me of oh, you're not coming you're always sick you already missed six weeks of this year blah 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 and then I felt like wow so you actually don't even want me to get better so what I did was I just quit my job like from one day to the other I remember I was sitting at my computer and at one point, I went to the toilet, like my stomach and my whole digestion went crazy. Like I was always crying on my way to work and driving back home. I was stuck in traffic. I was cursing. I was just like so unhappy. And on that day, I was like, OK, you know what? I think I'm going to call HR and just tell them, like, I'm I'm just leaving. I'm out of here. And I did, and it was it was amazing because I could go home right away. They were paying me two months, like more, so I could uh, check out the the office in Germany. This is pretty cool. So you can go to the office and tell them like, hey, listen, I'm looking for a new job, and they are paying you, which was a gift for me in that point. So finally, I could use the system for myself. So then I started a yoga teacher training in Germany. And it just wasn't it. It was just 
in my opinion, because I just started my journey, it was just like chanting all day. No mm. asanas. And mm. I was like, where are the asanas? I mean, I, w I came here to do yoga. Yoga mm. is asanas, right? Yoga is moving. So after half of the training, I quitted that. And to be honest, I quitted a lot in my life. I started things and I was quitting them. I quitted school before I had my, um, what's the word? My certification. Um, and many more things. So I, I was a quitter. Not anymore. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, yes, and then I always felt the urge to go to Bali again to do my training there. I felt the call of Mama Bali, but I didn't know then. And I didn't know then that Mama Bali was the one who was shaking things up, who was like stirring up this whole pot of shit. Sorry for my language. But showing me all of my shadows. And I realized, I realized that way later, but again, I felt like, okay, something's calling me to Bali. Whatever, I don't have the money, so I'm happy here. I have my relationship, my family, everything's fine. I ha then I adopted two cats because it was <laughs> COVID. I felt <laughs> alone, I was depressed, and um, I was not, or I'm still not vaccinated, so I was not able to go outside of the country or even outside of my home. Mm. So I was depressed, sad, alone, isolated. at home, isolated. Wow. And then my cats came into my life. <laughs> 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 yes. And then um, a really beautiful thing happened, which was that my best friend, she also went through same, same, but different, like huge depression um, in her own way, in her own pace. But at the same time, we were... Um, initiating while hanging out let's go to Bali and do the yoga teacher training together which was last year beginning of last year and um, it was a really difficult time of my life because I went back to have a half-time job in a real estate company and it was it was nice I was like the secretary I was taking care of everything and finances and accounting and HR everything Wow. Um, yeah it was cool I thought it was cool like also wearing these nice suits and high heels and always mm -hmm. like makeup and blah 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 and the, with my car like driving there and felt like I don't know what I thought I was um, but I was not happy <laughs> um, so what happened because I mean the universe was giving me many opportunities to start my journey in um, finding myself like I found the book The Secret which for me mm -hmm. was like my the game cha changer of my life I started to read that I was like wow I can attract things into my life like <laughs> literally everything yeah by Just changing the vibration <laughs> yeah. I, I can do a is vision board possible? which is by the way everything is possible yeah right <laughs> vision boards are crazy <laughs> if you look at my vision board now everything just happens yeah like exactly it's it's almost shocking um so I was in this real estate job and the universe and my spirit guides were like, wait a minute, J didn't you want to go to Bali and do yoga teacher training? I don't get what, what's happening here. <laughs> so again, um, shadows came and uh, what happened was my father got sick oh. from one day to the other. And for me, it was no question at all to quit my job again from one day to the other taking care of him because it was really bad like really really bad and I wasn't aware how bad it was when he got sick but yeah long story short um he passed away after five months mm. um and that I'm able to speak about this without breaking out in tears is a huge win for me <laughs> so and this is um, because now I know that because I believe in soul contracts and I believe that the soul of my father was because family was the most important thing for him so it was his job to show all of us all of his family his like witchy coven he created because we're like five girls <laughs> that um, everything is possible and that you can change your life. And I was so stuck in my life, in this whole life I created with like planning on getting married, 
having children and everything was just kind of sorted out and I felt like crying in a room full of people and screaming from the top of my lungs and no one was looking at me and I was wearing a mask all day and I felt so stuck and when he passed away I was like no way I'm not going back into this life so I went on a psychedelic retreat with my best Ooh. friend right before coming to Bali and this changed my life this was for me the biggest turning point because I was in therapy for so many years and <laughs> the golden teacher showed me in two hours so many things and healed so many wounds child wounds whatever and gave me the courage to come to Bali and I was supposed to stay in Bali for five weeks but after my teacher training I felt like I don't want to go home anymore so I stayed one more month and another month and another month realizing that I don't want to go back into my old life and this was super painful because I felt like I will hurt so many people but for the first time in my life I was doing something for myself out of love because I hated myself so much all of my life I was hating myself so much and I was punishing myself so much every day of my life and through the teacher training in Bali and psychedelics <laughs> I found myself in a way that I haven't known myself in forever and ever since I was a little kid I had this anxiety feeling I was I remember I was like four years old I was in a parking lot like um, full of cars it was dark and I can remember that this feeling it had kind of a color a smell a taste uh, a noise but I I'm not able to express in words what that was about and I never understood it because it just kept happening and I was four years old and during my journey here in Bali I also did some healing I did body work I did like Akashic records like everything Bali has so many things to offer and this also created like this puzzle for me to understand myself and I realized that my one of the goals in my life besides helping others is to have a PhD in myself to really know what am I made of like what what is my pure essence why am I here what's the purpose and um, yeah Bali showed me what life is about through yoga and yoga taught me what it means to really fall in love with yourself what it really means to fall in love with life and I was always a witch so I always had rituals but they were like more self-harming but now I realized like oh my god you can create so many beautiful things through practices of self-love and devotion and I think I never devoted myself to anything in such a healthy way more than to yoga because I'm always devoted I'm a people pleaser everyone else always long before me I always try to make everyone happy but me and I already shared that with you guys in the training um, that I lost my cup. So everyone always says like, fill up your cup first. And I was like, okay, well, where's nice. the cup? <laughs> uh, can I have one? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Do you, you have one? Oh, that's a pretty one. I don't know where mine is though, but okay, maybe that's normal. And then I found it. It was so dirty and still so precious and so fragile and and I loved it right away and I looked at it and I was like, I'm taking care of you now. Aww. You're my little cupsy now. <laughs> mm. And then I washed it and I put some gemstones and healing stones and I was like putting some magic and like some color. And now it's the most precious cup ever. And I'm, I'm always like filling up this cup until it overflows and that's when I start sharing magic with others because I know I'm here to share magic and to help others heal not I would never say I'm a healer or something but I know that I can show others the way how to heal themselves because I could heal myself through yoga and after the training I because Manjit was one of the teachers um, I was so into Tantra Oh, I was like, yes, that's my thing. Come on, let's do some Tantra. What is Tantra? 
I want to know <laughs> what is it. And then I was taking part on this giveaway from your retreat guides, mm -hmm. which I found uh, over a friend because she was like putting me in the comments. So I was participating and then at some point you were texting me like, hey, you won the spot and I wanted to go to Bali so bad. I always told everyone I'm com coming back to Bali in September. And what happened? I came back in September, joined the retreat. Um, I met all of you again game changer and as soon as I found out um, that you guys are doing the yoga teacher training I wanted to be part of that so much because of course the teacher training I did it was nice we, oh, it was such a nice time such a nice group of girls and I learned a lot but I knew I want to dive even more deeper like deep it was not deep enough for me like more philosophy more stimulating penetrating my mind i'm i have my venus and aries so people need to stimulate me in my brain that i feel aroused <laughs> and <laughs> that's what happened with you guys you uh, all of the i have so many quotes in my journal that you guys said oh, so juicy delicious and i <laughs> love that that's my thing so guys come to modern mystic this is it was the most incredible journey ever it taught me so many things. It brought up so many shadows and it made me so much better and sweeter. Mm. I love that. It's <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. I see something that I see is like you have been, I know you have been navigating some shadows in your life and some challenging moments, like your dad passing was a big one. Mm. And I notice for what I know you as well and for what you share here is that all of these challenges and that an adversity or an expected thing that have happened to you, you have been using them and alchemizing to go deep into like <laughs> what is life and who am I mm -hmm. and what, why are we here? And you're looking different tools like let's say yoga and tantra and, and any different healing modalities to tap into that answer, you know, the PhD on your body to get to know yourself deeper, to get to know the self deeper capital s so this is something that i i admire from you mm. is 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 when the shadow come or anything arise within it's like oh hey let's let's surf with it and let's go let's use this as an opportunity to go deeper mm. but it was not always like that i always or i also feel like the people who are like the most light people who are shining the most, they had to go through shadows, like long periods of time in their lives, like the darkest black shadow you can imagine. And that's why they are so full of light. So many people seem so dull to me, like almost grayish, because they, they're just like, like little ants doing whatever. But people who are like waking up, and I feel like, for every one of us, the burnout, the depression, it was not, okay, it's called depression, but it was nothing less and nothing more than a spiritual awakening. Mm. And I'm so thankful for every mm. single shadow that was coming towards me. And it started when I was four, so, but I didn't know what it was because there w it was, I feel like it was someone protecting me like this. And then slowly, the hand was taking off my eyes so mm. I could look around and like, oh, wow, okay, this is really not a nice place to be. Mm. You live here? I don't want to live here. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Yeah, and I would call myself an alchemist 100%. Mm. You mentioned that the only practice that you stay somehow committed and consistent was yoga. And for me, that's so not <laughs> random because um, is such a foundational practice, considering that, let's say, a couple of thousand years ago, when yoga was systematized, it was um, it was the, it was one of the first system to understand the mind, mm. why we suffer. We suffer because we are ignorant of our true nature, and in order to tap into true nature, we need to do yoga, we need to chitta vritti nidoda, right? To, to calm that fluctuations of the mind, all these samskaras and the imprints and conditionings and traumatic experience that doesn't allow us to see with clarity what is actually there. 
exactly. right? Like this example of the the person who is in the dark room and he feels really scared because there is a snake around. Mm. And then when the lights are on, it's not a snake, but it's just a, a rope hanging. And then, yeah, what was all this anxiety? Right? What was all this anxiety about? <laughs> this is like us in life, realizing certain things about life and looking back and you know, what was all that anxiety about? Yes. And all that fear. And somebody asked the Dalai Lama actually, uh, once why, how to deal with anxiety. And he said, well, the origins of anxiety is because we are uh, overthinking about mm. ourselves. It's all about me, me, me. Mm -hmm. And you forget about others. You, you forget about being in service, which is the medicine, I would say, for, or one of the main medicines for anxiety, for depression is like, how oh, I can be in service. Uh, at least something that I have served for me in my path. So regardless if we take the path in, you know, you were in the detox world, Ayurveda world, uh, shamanic medicine, plant medicine. It could be a high, powerful experience, you know, take ayahuasca or go on a deep trip with, with mushroom, but there is something that we need a, f a consistent framework of real, a consistent framework that can help us to navigate reality, a consistent practice, and an, a, a, a foundational understanding of who we are and why we suffer and how, what are the mental patterns that make mm -hmm. us suffering. And it's all explained in the philosophy of yoga. It's all explained. It's, it's so just amazing. so foundational of whatever healing practice, whatever, I if anybody who is healing, like becoming, want to become a shaman and, and uh, an alchemist, a healer, whatever it is, yoga is so foundational, especially years after all of these Padanjali Sutras, uh, when Tantra came to influence yoga and start like working with the body, working with the breath, working with the energetic systems, it, it becomes so somehow so complete, you know, the whole Tantric yoga uh, as a foundational practice, mm -hmm. regardless, again, which direction we take in our own healing path and in our own f path to facilitate others. Exactly. I know, Theresia, you have a question for us. <laughs> Uh, question do you have a question for us mm, can i, I quickly add something to make it a full circle what i shared yeah. because when i started to do yoga i thought it was only about the asanas but now i know <laughs> that it's as you were sharing it's a whole foundation of how to live life happily and all, all of the things you all were sharing during this teacher training they gave me this brain orgasm of realizing wow yoga is just um a channel so people are in order for people to understand using the technology of language what life is about so all of these things you were sharing each one of you teachers was building this mycelium of knowledge channeled down into the language that we understand, that our minds can understand, because our souls remember. I feel like everything I learn, it's like my soul being like, oh yeah, I knew that. I knew that already, thank you for remembering. But yoga is not only asanas. So yeah. I know that now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing. I love how you explain. <laughs> Mycelium yeah, of exactly. knowledge. I love it, that part. Mind well. orgasm. <laughs> Pure poetry. Mm. I just would like to say, yeah, <laughs> wisdom is an outcome of seeing every life experience as a learning opportunity. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. That's mm. the tantric path as well, you know. Negative, positive experience. It's all welcome when brave the darkness, the light, and use it for. S self development mm. so yeah it's so beautiful let's jump to the um, question uh, hard question power question mm. section mm. so i have a couple of ideas prepared but i'm curious to know yours Melo or theresa if you want to start so we can uh, jam <laughs> here in the group my question is how to balance self-discipline <laughs> and <laughs> self-compassion. Ooh. Oh. Caroline will start that one. Ooh. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out that one. Yeah. Self-compassion, you mean? Or compassion to others? Self-compassion. 
so being really self disciplined and also having that balance of self compassion and i i believe that having self compassion and self love the result is it's having discipline discipline it's a result of self love and self self compassion so you let it go of small little pleasures in order to achieve something much bigger and you just focus on on that goal and you do it consistently every day mm. because you love yourself so much and you know that is worth it all that hard work and you do it because you really deserve that outcome. Mm. You really want that outcome. So I think both, they, they are very close to each other. Yeah. Because for me, um, talking about yoga, it's really about balancing myself. Uh, before I got into this training, I was really, really, really focused on my goals, mm. um, on making my visions come true until I got into very, 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 very disciplined mode. There you go. Um, I forgot about other aspects of my life, <laughs> <laughs> other mm. aspects of myself, of like, mm. just have fun, enjoy life, mm. and yeah. Embrace I your felt femininity. Like, yeah, I felt like this training is uh, somehow a reset, a retreat <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, it's like, yeah, uh, paying attention to whole aspect of my life. Mm. Oh, I see. I think uh, your question was like how to balance the discipline and also the pleasure, the joy yeah. of life, right? Mm. Okay. Well, it's, it's for me, it's <laughs> a practice. Mm. It's a daily practice where you need to, okay, I dedicated time for my goals to achieve what I want, but also I need to dedicate time for my self-care, self-love. And that's when it comes, the integration of the masculine and the feminine polarity. So the, the masculine, it's disciplined, it's strong, consistent, have a structure, wants to achieve something, have a goal. And the feminine wants to enjoy the journey, not only to achieve, to get there, but also have fun and dance yeah. while it gets there, you know? So that's what we need to integrate in our daily life. Some time to the discipline, to our goals, work, and also time to cultivate our femininity, our poetic mind, and get keep the inspiration for life, you know? And yeah, rituals. For me, it works the way I do. I do in the morning when I wake up. I like to wake up in the feminine way. Mm. So connecting to my female body and then I do my little rituals that I feel that fills up my cup. And then after that, I focus on work and discipline. And by the end of the day, I go back to my feminine energy again and fill up my cup again, recharge myself, self resource. And then I go to sleep feeling good and happy. That's how I do. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also still trying to figure this one out because <laughs> I am so in love with being in my feminine energy that mm. sometimes I forget about the masculine part. <laughs> 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 but the universe gave me, again, opportunities. So um, a lot of great things were happening in the last couple of months in my life. So I was gifted with like hosting uh, a retreat, like three groups in back on back. So now I have to plan this whole thing because <laughs> no one else would do it for me. Um, and this is teaching me the tapas at the moment, discipline. And fortunately, I have my best friend with me again <laughs> <laughs> because we are always like double packed, double You don't trouble. have your cats right now, but you have your best friend. I have my best friend. We are, we are like two cats, so. Cat life. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yes, I'm trying to combine these two um, somehow. Still learning, um, but I know that 
both of these um, masculine and feminine archetypes live in each one of us. So I enjoy, as I said, being in the feminine way too much. Not No, not too much, but a little bit more than being in the masculine. So at the moment, I'm still learning that. And the, the teacher training also taught me many tools how I can accumulate that and how I can tap more into my masculine energy, even though it's not that much fun. But it will bring so much fun to others and it will bring so many beautiful things um, if I can like create this container for others to receive and then I will receive their love again. <laughs> so yeah, I'm still practicing and I feel like this will take some more time, but I know we can all do that and I can do it as well. <laughs> mm. And one thing I would like to add as well, you mentioned that yoga it's helping to balance your masculine. Mm. A and for me, it's not only balance, but uh, really tap into mm. the healthy masculine mm. because we can have the unhealthy part, right? And the healthy one, which is discipline, focused, good in the heart, <laughs> provider, <laughs> you know, it's all those aspects mm. of the healthy masculine. So yoga really bring this to us, the healthy feminine and the healthy masculine. I love that part as well. <laughs> what yeah. about you? Mm. I feel like I'm always in life either loaded to one side or to the <laughs> other side. <laughs> and That's balance, right? <laughs> <laughs> but th the balance Swinging. is not, I don't <laughs> think necessarily need to be like always being somehow fifth finger masculine, fifth finger feminine. I believe in cycles. Mm. I believe in the stages. Yeah. Because okay. if I look back in my life, there was a moment and especially my let's call it healing moment or, or stage or spiritual expansion stage. When I start traveling, I start looking for teachers, learning yoga, reading the books and doing my, my s practice. It was a very feminine, very feminine oriented in the sense I was uh, more on the flow, very intuitive decisions. Not like this makes sense. Many decisions that I did back in the time didn't make any sense. I was <laughs> feeling with like I was I was leaving my pills for anxiety and for depression. Mm. I was finishing them, and at the same time, I was I decided to like leave Chile to Australia to exactly the other side of the world. Wow. When maybe was the moment that I needed the most support, mm. because whenever you leave like any pill for mental health, you get like this uh, how they call it backlash or mm -hmm. uh, side effects. Mm -hmm. And sometimes sy symptoms become stronger than what's happened to me. So I was taking these very intuitive based decisions. I was waking up at any time that I felt like because mm. I quit my job. Same uh. as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everyone quit their job. I needed to quit my job, try to save uh, uh, as much as I could before um, and use my savings for what was next. That was very unknown. You know, I feel like the feminine also is the path of the unknown because mm. you, you there is a trust on it and there is submission, a submission to the unknown, a submission mm. to to a divine intelligence that yeah. will guide you. So it's legs from like a logical ego mind oriented type of decisions. Like what makes sense to do? What makes sense to do in life? Uh, okay, let's go to the doctor. Okay, no, let's don't travel. Let's do this. Very more like in a square type of things. And yeah, no much actually, D discipline was, n you asked for discipline, uh, about discipline, it wasn't really present. It was more about how I feel and what is relevant for me right now. And that was the way to take care of myself. The best mm. way to take care of myself was that. Beautiful. And I think there's masculine ways some also to take care of yourself, you know, to be consistent every morning, go to the gym, whatever, you have this <laughs> structure and be disciplined. You take care of yourself. But the way that I could heal, it was the, the Shakti path, you mm. know, the way of the Shakti. Um, I think I met you around this yeah, time, Yeah, definitely. Right? Mm. Yeah, definitely. in the flow. I remember mm. that time. Definitely. <laughs> and, and I see the change. Yeah. Like yeah. And I love this part, mm. the Shiva. I'm glad. Ah. I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> love the Shiva. So yes, yes. the healthy Shiva. The healthy Shiva. Thank <laughs> you for that. Exactly. So I was I was traveling the world, did my teacher training as uh, in India. Flow. It was so much flow. Everything in the flow. Sometimes I miss a little bit of that. 
<laughs> because as you say, you know, there is there's nothing like the fem I mean this life is feminine. Mm -hmm. We call it mother nature, not yes. father nature. It's so nourishing. Yes. It just nourishes us. It, it keeps us alive. Um, when we're born, when we are babies, you know, we uh, drink milk from our mother breast. Mm. It's so nourishing and warm. Um, so of course, and I wouldn't choose. I wouldn't choose in this any other way. It was so. It was challenging, but it was what I needed. Um, so yeah, I end up in Bali, and I start feeling way better. But I kept the flow of like, mm -hmm. okay, whatever. Let's see what life has to me. You know what have to offer to me, and. Um, it was amazing, but m probably a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, I would say three years ago, <laughs> two or three years ago, um, there was a shift. There was a moment to, okay, enough of, <laughs> enough <laughs> of like eating too much, also too much strawberries, you know? Yeah. Like it's good to take some strawberries and then just oh, like so relax for a little <laughs> bit. But it's like enough of strawberries, otherwise, you know, too much strawberries and chocolate might make you sick as well. It was a call to, okay, what I want to do with in the world here as Sebastian, as with this body, with these resources, what I want to create, what I want to build. Mm. Okay, if I want to build this, I need this, this, this. And I start backward engineer all of this. And now what I'm doing or what I'm attempting to do, or at least what my deepest intention right now in this moment actually of my life is, is to stick to it. Mm -hmm. And I see things that come to my life which taste like strawberries. Mm. <laughs> and I need to say, like, no, I have, I have a plan. I need to, I'm committed. I'm disciplined if I want to get there. And, and it feels really aligned. So this is interesting about masculine and feminine. You say there is a shadow aspect of each one of them. But when you are in the healthy aspect of it, they both look, may look very different approach mm. to life, but they both are so, r it can feel so right. Mm. It can feel so aligned. And living in integrity for me is living in alignment with what is the call in that moment of your mm. life. And it seems to be, for me, if I look back in the last couple of years, that I'm more in that side, the discipline side of your question. You know, I'm super open to shift, to flow with both, to bring a little bit of feminine in the, within the masculine, and a little bit of masculine within the feminine. And I think that's that's the dance, right? That's yeah. the dance of life. Thank you for your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you for you your question. Melo, you want to go next? Yeah, let's see what I prepared. A cryptic. Mm, okay, so I was wondering. Ooh. Um, because Tantra invites us to engage with life, with all its complexities, including our desires, fears, and shadows. So how can we harness the energy of our desires? Um, because they're often seen as obstacles on the spiritual path to facilitate deeper self-discovery and connection with the divine. Mm. Can I start this one? Mm -hmm. Please, I want <laughs> to know. <laughs> You know, many people say, oh, yes, desire, it's mm. not good. And Buddha said that is the cause of suffering and all of that. Well, I will not <laughs> say anything about uh, Buddha. <laughs> 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 I will not start <laughs> contradicting Buddha, of course. <laughs> the Dalai Lama is also here. Yeah, yeah, my <laughs> humble, <laughs> humble opinion. <laughs> my humble opinion. <laughs> and... At the same time, I think desires are really important. Mm. Yeah. Actually, I do have a list of desires oh, that yes. I do. Oh, I love that. And, <laughs> and I keep growing this list. I want mm. this and I want that. Mm. And desires for me gives this sparkle for life. Mm. This fire to, ooh, I want to do this. It gives me the fuel to keep going here in this world because sometimes the world can be so you know so hard and mm. and difficult so when you have dreams and desires mm. you get excitement about okay but it also have this part and i can go to bali and i can <laughs> do this and that so desire gives this libido for mm. life oh yes. this desire 
for life. <laughs> I love that. So desires are super, mm. super important. Mm. The problem is when we get attached to yes, the desire. Right? For me, that's when the desire can be problematic. When you get obsessed by the desire and then instead of enjoy life and, and get to the desire one day, you are obsessed and neurotic and so being stressing a slave out, of the desire. being a slave of the desire. And then I, I think Buddha wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me correct. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> for everyone to understand. I would just like, again, use the technology of words for exactly. everyone to understand what you wanted to say. That was yeah. what he meant, yeah, you know? Totally. Is that attachment that creates the, mm. the greatest problem yeah. in the story it's of desire. It's not about desires. You can desire, desire gives the motivation. Yes. You right. know, otherwise, if you don't have desire, why you live? Why you wake up in the morning to do what? Mm. You know, you're going to be like, mm. <laughs> so boring, mm, you know. I just heard someone saying this, or someone was sharing this with me. There was this guy, and he was—I will not say he was a freak, but he was in this like weed shop in Kopangan, and he was never talking. And all of a sudden, at one point, he was looking at the other person and just sharing the following. He was like, "Inspiration is just." It's the same as manipulation, but in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. Yes, I so I love your answer about that you can use them. It's the same with vision boards, right? You have all of the things that you desire on them, and sometimes you tend to lose yourself in that. Because then you're in the future, and you're like, oh, yeah. but I want that, and I don't have it now, so my life is actually not good at the moment and then you get attached to wanting yeah. whatever but um the yeah the detachment That's and also the, the <laughs> it's the secret and also in like being grateful for what you have already and just surrendering to the flow of life because what what is meant for you will always find its way to you but it's it, it has such a shadow aspect like desiring and sexuality and everything and People are assuming that Tantra and Yoga is like kind of a religion like Scientology or something like that. It's a bad thing and Bali and this is all India and whatever. This is all just so weird and what 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 are you doing there? But it teached me how to use my desires to create out of them like the most beautiful, precious things ever without still not attaching <laughs> exactly. i get attached so easily because when i find something precious i'm like oh i want to keep you in my little pocket and just stay with me because you make me feel so good but just, just let, let it go <laughs> yeah. and life is so <laughs> abandoned you know? yes why not to just use this uh, mm. experience life fully and it's abundance that is there for us. Nature is abundant. Mm. You plant a, a passion fruit tree and it gives you many fruits, passion fruits, you know? Why mm. not eat them all right. or share with your friends right. and make some juices oh. around? <laughs> a nice salad, you know? nice dressing, whatever. But if the passion fruit is not there yet, okay, enjoy life and have fun. And one day when the fruit come, you enjoy, you mm. You experience, you taste When the it. season is there. When the season <laughs> is there, mm. exactly. When the time is right. Yes. <laughs> the so cycles again. The cycles. The cycles. I love yeah. that. I love that. What is your relationship with desire? Mm. I think desire is a state, a natural state that every human has. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to have desires. Um, for me, desires help me to change my life mm. like the turning point i can change i can be consistent mm. i can take action because i have a desire for change mm. Mm. Exactly. it's like gives you permission yeah um and i think what's important is to know that 
that desire is really, really from my heart. So it's intentional. It's genuine. Mm. Because I think with a lot of people, a lot of us, we thought that it was our desire, but it's because maybe because we are FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> We see a lot of people with these things and we thought that we want these things, but yeah, I think it's important to reflect and to ask ourselves, is, that mm. is this really what we want? Is this really our mm. desire? And my relationship with the desire, I always use it for the highest good. Um, and that's what kept me here. That's why that's why I joined the yoga teacher training because I have a desire to change my life, to do something different. Um, yeah. So are you a Jomo now or still a Fomo? <laughs> Jomo. A Jomo. Is Jomo. Joy of missing out. Oh, joy of missing out. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Jomo. Nice. Thank you for checking that. in. I love that. I'm taking away that. Checking in when you have a desire is this is what I yeah. really want to. Because how much we can be influenced by media, social media, uh, family, society, religion, totally. um, and what is my authentic desire? I think that's a very fair pursuit to, to have. Question. But coming back to the Buddha, there is an actual <laughs> debate <laughs> of what he really meant. There is a debate oh yeah? if he meant like you should remove all desire or is a matter of clinging to the desire, the mm -hmm. attachment, as you say, or the clinging that... I need this for my happiness um, that open up this space of um, insatisfaction. Because as long as you have a desire, there's something that you want, right? That you more likely don't have. Therefore, you're insatisfied. So how you can find complete satisfaction and true freedom in the present moment. So that's the, the logical component and makes sense. But then here where the tantric thought came. <laughs> And the modern mystic way of seeing this thing is like, oh, I have a desire. Let me dance with it. And mm -hmm. let me find the, let me feel complete and wholesome and satisfied within the desire itself, which is a little bit of a paradox because it goes against this vision of, okay, I desire something. I don't have it. Therefore, I'm insatisfied. Well, I'm satisfied and I still don't have it, but I am just dancing with this energy and that's, that's all what I mm. need right now. And there is this, pers this yogic perspective that says uh, desire is inherent uh, of any human being because um, initially we have consciousness and, and consciousness or purusha desire to be self-aware. Mm -hmm. So purusha needs to project this apparently different reality so it can has a chance to look back mm. like a mirror to consciousness itself right so all this game we are all this matter that is made out of energy and so on the gunas and so on uh there is a different or apparent reality so we can look back to source so we need two realities for them to be aware of each other right how you can be aware of yourself unless somebody is there or you look at yourself in a mirror or in a reflection of the lake so there was a desire, the desire of self-realization mm. is so inherent, mm. the desire. That's why we're <laughs> in the spiritual path. Okay. So that's a desire itself. And mm. people might say that might be the only desire that exists and all the desire are somehow attempts to end up knowing who you really are. Mm. You know, like I desire to attract yeah. this type of relationship because potentially, and even without even knowing it, unconsciously, this relationship would teach me certain things about loving myself deeper, That's you know? So, so we good. start being like more grateful about what happened to us, even the difficult relationships. Yeah. So that I think that tantric perspective resonates deeper for me. Mm. And in a practical way that I noticed this, I started practicing this in a, in a tan neo tantric school that we will not name. Okay. <laughs> we will I not know name. which one you're talking about. <laughs> So um, it's a neo tantra school, so it was very heavily focused on sexual practices and, and expanding the orgasm and um, men non-ejaculating, uh, so if they want to reach a higher state of uh, enlightenment, whatever it is. Regardless, 
the audience, if you are agree or not, regardless, I had the experience once that we were start working with sexual energy. And by that time, I had a lover, and that person um, invited me to some practices. Mm. And I remember there was the first time in my life that we work consciously on expanding desire, sexual desire. Let's, let's have that as an intention in the flesh and bones and make it big and make it as big <laughs> as possible <laughs> and burn. where normally people would like okay i have sexual desire and you have sexual desire let's have sex mm. but this time it's like let's do it and let's don't have sex it's yeah. like the hell is that that's so <laughs> frustrating and probably many men maybe listening to this will be like no way right this is uh i'm gonna get sick or something i'm gonna go crazy in my mind but then i had a visceral experience mm. of the power of building a desire and staying con not, not only staying content with your desire, but using that desire for like a spiritual expansion, mm. energy expansion, healing, even sending healing for other people <laughs> that were like, wow, that was wild because how would you think <laughs> in somebody who is sick in the other <laughs> side of the world that you love and you are s sexually aroused, oh, I love that. channeling somehow that energy towards that. It might it might sound pretty weird and wild, but that's cool. That's what's called sex magic. We love sex. But that magic. was the very first time that I understood mm -hmm. viscerally, not logically. If somebody mm -hmm. explain me this, this makes absolute no sense. You know, just be logical, be pragmatical. If the person is sick, call her and tell <laughs> her to go to the hospital. Right. Um, that was the first time that I noticed that we can alchemize our inner energies in terms of looking a way to just quickly release it or quick, quickly um, mm. get it, you know, mm. whatever the desire is. It doesn't need to be a sexual desire. And it was incredibly powerful. And then I started applying this in other um, areas of my life, even with food, you know, when, whenever you, um, I notice myself sometimes like craving and eating just because out of cravings. Mm. And this is something I know you understand very well. Um, okay, I'm, I'm craving a sweet, I'm craving a chocolate, I'm craving food. I know it's not for survival, I don't need it, no. you know, you know yeah. when it's not. And <laughs> most of the things that we eat probably are not for survival. Gula, we say, what is in English, gula? Uh, sugar. Cravings. Oh, sugar, sugar, sugar is in, uh, uh, gula in Indonesia, <laughs> but I mean like, sugar cravings. I mean like sugar cravings. I was having this craving. Okay, let's let's breathe into it and let's feel like wow, this mm. this feeling. <laughs> Very yogi. <laughs> yeah. <don't> this <laughs> this feeling. What? I have a desire. <laughs> let's breathe into it. <laughs> let's breathe into it. <laughs> so I was craving food, like a knowing yogi. that it was not for survival. Mm. I was really like one just a third dessert or something like this, and let's meditate for a moment in the feeling of desiring mm. something and finding peace with mm. it. Finding peace, contentment, and full satisfaction within the desire. That changed the whole game mm. of life. I love it's that. It's really incredible, yes. really powerful. Thank you. I also would, would love to share that desire also helped me to heal. Mm. Um, I'm talking specifically about working, uh, I mean like making my dreams come true um, because I grew up in an environment where a woman sees, uh, seems like less than a man, mm -hmm. um, a woman just need to take care of the children um being in the kitchen so my past self i thought i i couldn't do something more i didn't know that i was capable i didn't know that i didn't even know that i had a desire so wow. yeah i will say that i didn't have a dream because i didn't have the courage to have the dream because mm. I was not even confident, like I didn't know that I could do something. 
so uh, from the turning point of that unhealthy relationship i started to focus on myself i started um having this positive habits um and slowly slowly just um setting these small goals um achieving them and then it got bigger 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 and then it really proved me that oh i can do something i am capable so and that's also because because of this desire mm -hmm. and this desire also came because now i i show myself that i am capable so the desire is growing crawling <laughs> no desire again um but i'm learning to be balanced as well to be intentional of that desire mm. to be grateful of what i i already have so it really helped me every time i see myself taking action making my dreams come true it really proved me that everything is possible <laughs> <laughs> again <laughs> It's going to be the name really of the, this episode. Yeah, I think <laughs> Everything so as is well. possible. Everything is possible. And you touched in a very important point because nowadays people in society, especially those ones living in the false matrix, mm. in those uh, structures, you know, nine five kind of work, they don't have dreams anymore. Yeah. And when you ask them, what's your dream of mm. life? What you would I like just to do? I just want to survive. That's I just want to pay my bills and survive. Yes. Exactly. What about being happy? And there are no, sp there is no sparkle yes. in their eyes. And they wake up in the auto automatism, you know. And and when it mm, it's Monday, then they feel. I used to feel this, by the way. Yeah. That depression. Actually, this depression started on Sunday evening. Mm. I would start to feel right before uh, Monday. Yes, I would start to feel like mm, the, the hat wheel will start again, mm. and I have no idea why I'm doing this, but mm. I must to do mm. yeah. for for the survival, and that's the way we believe it's the correct way of living when you are in the false matrix. So people nowadays they forgot how to desire, how to think big, you know, yeah. how to dream big. <laughs> and I'm so happy to hear from all of you that you really believing mm. in yourself and believing that it's possible to make your dreams come true. Very nice. Because it is possible. <laughs> 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 I just love how this conversation is unfolding because my question that I prepared was initially because I wanted to end exactly at that point. Because you were also asking what is present, what are we pondering about at the moment? And for me, it's exactly what you guys were sharing at the moment. And a few weeks ago, it was right before coming to Bali, I was using some plant medicine, meditating, and I always channel things down and I just start to write them and I was writing like a lot about this topic of like are you dreaming your life or are you living your dream mm. right mm. because okay. ma all of the people are like talking about oh th she li she's living the life of my dreams and this is my dream life and then I was really like writing like a couple of sites about this topic like wow okay so what is my dream life and am i just dreaming it or am i living my dream and then i realized actually i'm living my dream i just started to i, I don't even know when it started it was with yoga i suppose but are you living your dream or are you dreaming your life well, are you asking me <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you you mm. were just saying these words and that's mm. wha what I wanted to hear from you when I asked my question. I am living my dream life. Mm. Like having this kind of conversation, <laughs> <laughs> meeting this kind of people, like it's my dream. Mm. And I didn't know it's possible for me, but everything is possible. <laughs> 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 like, 
Yeah, um, maybe a lot of people, when they knew my age, they didn't know that it's possible for mm -hmm. these young people to say this kind of thing, but it's possible. And I, I don't think age really defined us as human. It's just a number. Mm. Yeah. Love that. What about you? If I am living my dream or I am dreaming your life, my, my life. life. Are you still dreaming or are you awake? <sighs> Oof. Don't ask a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, exactly. To a <laughs> philosophy teacher, but give like me, give me. Um, but I, I just want to just be super practical and I resonate with Teresa was sharing that I do believe also that I am living my dream and it's, it's almost like I never choose it. You know, mm. this is something that comes up for me. This is a specific thing, which is sometimes we, we, we plan, right? We envision, we were talking about vision boards and nothing against vision boards. I love <laughs> it, <laughs> but we envision this life we want to attract. Yeah. But I, everything turned out better. Yeah. Mm. Than right. What I envisioned. Yeah. Amazing. There is, That's there is, amazing. I feel like is. Uh, of course, with challenges and moments that you doubt and moments that nothing is working, of course, I think that's part of the path of life, but I feel that there is some intelligence, some force that underlines everything that is beyond our mind, ego mind understanding that it's, it's very compassionate somehow, you know? Um, and if people talk about God, I think that would be God to me. There's, there's an evident intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm deeper than what our brains can understand. And if that's not God, what it is. So this is interesting because somebody, I remember ask this guru um, in a conference, um, uh, can you wish me for my desires come true? And the guru say, I don't wish your desires come true. I wish something way better than mm. your desires come true. Mm. And that's more, more likely, that's what's gonna happen. So if I look back, there was many things that I was desiring and, s and I feel like some of them, yeah, it, it, it took shape, but I, I think it's also a result of me allowing myself, allowing myself to be surprised mm. and jumping to the unknown and all the courage that we took, listening also your stories, that all here we took to, there was a moment that we jumped to the unknown and when you do psychedelics, also you jump to the unknown. That's a big unknown. When you decide to live in uh, uh, Java, Java? I live in Jakarta. 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 When you decide to leave Jakarta and come to other place to live, that's, that's a jump into the mm. unknown. And all of these things that we have been doing, uh, somehow all these portals open and it's like, wow, maybe it's better than what I wished from the very beginning, right? And this reminds me of one of my favorite quotes. Oh. Let's go with quotes. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, those ones who don't believe in magic will never find it. Oh. Yeah. Mm. I love this quote so much. Love Thank that. you. <laughs> the universe is so full of wow. magic, you know, as so you said, this intelligence that is beyond of our understanding. So sometimes we just need to believe that Baptist Melega, mm. anything's possible and the magic will happen. Mm. And if we stay in our comfort zone, scared about life and being comfortable but boring, then we don't allow space for the magic mm. of the universe conspire, you know? So mm. I love this quote so much. <laughs> Deeply resonates. With me too. Theresia, what is your power quote? What is your favorite quote? I am the most important person in my life. Mm. Oh, I hope for that. Mm. I yes. think this this yeah. is really powerful um, because we we all used to be conditioned of like putting others first, especially with my culture as well. It sounds like it's very selfish to putting myself first and I had this guilt feeling I had this unhealthy feeling of like 
hearing myself, listening to myself. And then um, when I really, really realized that I am the most important person in my life, that I'm living for myself, I'm not living for anyone else. Um, and I think that's how I can be, how I can live my life to the fullest, how mm. I can live my dream life, how I can be truly happy and live an effortless life. And effortless means aligned life, life that's aligned with me. And yeah. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you. So my favorite quote is the one about knowledge. I shared in the training, but I brought another one, which is, inspiration is God making contact with itself inside you. And following that inner voice is following your path by Ramdas. I deeply resonate with Ramdas philosophy. And this is what led me here because I just let God or the source or whatever you want to call it gu like guide me to this exact moment by just surrendering, not always asking what the whys. I I'm just surrendering to the flow and that's exactly what brings me to the most magical people, to the most magical opportunities and I think this is the best way to experience life at its fullest again by letting God um, move through you, act through you, experience life through you in your human body, right? Trust, <laughs> trust, trust, trust. That's a good one. That. Surrender to the divine yeah. intelligence. Ishvara Tanitha. Mm. Oh, yeah. um. <laughs> <laughs> My quote <laughs> is yeah, it's, li it's just slightly longer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's from a movie mm. of one of my biggest mentors, Alejandro Jodorowsky. Mm, beautiful. He's I a psycho magician and a healer and a, s a filmmaker. Um, incredible mind. Um, with his book, he was a deep initiation for me just by listening to him and reading. In a movie about his childhood, one of his movies about his childhood, there is a moment that his little, uh, the little himself, he was playing with kids and he got really bullied about this kid mm -hmm. with other kids. Um, so he was in this beach uh, feeling really sad. And there is a scene, this kid, the little Alejandro Jodorowsky go to the cliff to jump and take his life because it was too much for, for him. He was very sad. And he was about to jump, and then his older self, his older Alejandro came, and he grabbed him mm. in that moment, and he said, Don't make us cry now, please. <laughs> he said, Stop. Do not jump. You are not alone. You are with me. Mm. All that you will be, you already are. All that you seek is already within you. Rejoice in your suffering, for through it you will reach me. And I, who will I be in 20 years, in 100 years, in 10,000 years? My consciousness will still need a body. For you, I don't exist yet. For me, you no longer exist. Mm. At the end of time, when matter begins its journey back to the point of origin, you and I will have only been memories, never reality. Something is dreaming us. Mm -hmm. Surrender to the illusion, live. Mm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are we are closing right now. Uh, there's no need to explain, but watch the movie <laughs> La Danza de la Realidad <laughs> by Alejandro Jodorowsky. Let's finish. I mean, what bring us together was this journey of uh, this yoga immersion, deep with philosophy, practice, authentic relating, embodiment, tantra, friends, uh, 
dance, mm. massage. Yes. All one thing, what was your, and we're closing with this one, what was your biggest takeaway? What was your favorite thing about this journey together? I would love to share one of the memorable memorable moments in ma in the training. Uh, it was Manjit session. Mm. Um, at that time, <laughs> uh, he gave this power question. So the question was, "What felt unfinished if I was to die tomorrow?" Mm. And somehow it it was really emotional for me. Um, it was also a turning point because um, I was at the phase of like really, really focusing on myself and my goals until I forgot other aspects of my life, until I forgot, oh, connection is beautiful, mm. friendship is beautiful, um, living with the flow, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my turning point. Thank you for sharing. Mm, beautiful. So for me, one hundred percent, it was um, the cat at the pub. <laughs> 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 These little tiny <coughs> cuties. No, for me, it was um, during the first days of the training. I met a huge shadow. And this shadow almost made me um, quit the training. I was about to say, like, listen, guys, I don't know if I can do that. I, I'm, I leave you with that. But the training really showed me um, that I'm capable and that I just need to step into my power. When you were saying that at the graduation closing ceremony, it resonated so much. My solar plexus was going crazy you, you told me like that I that I already have it and that I should just do it and that I should embrace it embody it and yeah I was really um, starting to manipulate myself into you're not good enough and what are you doing here and you should you should not even be teaching and just stop whatever you're doing and now I'm like come on I know you're worried about me, whatever. I don't need you anymore. Stop like making this mess out of my inner child. Look at her, she's crying over there. So please just go away, taking care of my inner child. And now I know um, I will be a great space holder. And that's what I learned through this training that I, I will bring the modern mystics to Germany and to Europe and to all over the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me my power. Thank you for back. sharing that. <laughs> thank mm. you for asking. I will also bring modern mystics to all over Indonesia. Yes! yes. <laughs> Caroline, any last word? Mm. Anything that you want to share? Any takeaway? From the training? You yeah. Mean? For me as a teacher, uh, it's always an honor to be able to plant seeds in the mm. heart of the student mm. and to bring the wisdom of yoga, but not only the wisdom of yoga, also my own inner journey, my path, my experience with yoga and without yoga and bring this to them and know that after that, they will spread and plant those mm. seeds in the hearts of other people. And for me also, it was such a joy, especially in this training, we talked a lot about building confidence. And as you mentioned there, so for me, it's so beautiful to help them to empower themselves, to believe in themselves, that they are able to plant those seeds mm. anywhere they go. That's for me, it's amazing. Yoga is union and we are meant here to connect to each other, to connect with our bodies. And I think this is what one of the main things that the Modern Mystic School brings and the teacher is the possibility to connect in different ways with ourselves, with our emotions, with our, mm. with our potential to freely, fearlessly, authentically express ourselves. 
So it's about relationships. It's about the relationship we have with our own self, with our mind, with our bodies, with others, mm. and with the world, with our food, with Mother Nature, and so on. So I think this is something, this is the biggest call right now. As modern mystics, anybody who is listening <laughs> um, to, to start incorporating this in our daily life. Thank you, guys. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> 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 Amazing. Ooh, well done. Well done. I love